first thought we'd uh, discuss treatment of cartilage lesions greater than two square centimetres. Um, basically, this is the easier uh, category, I think. Um, but I thought at first I'd put some background on it because I think it becomes a little bit relevant later. So, depending on which source you read, somewhere in the region of 10, 16,000 people undergo a cartilage repair treatment in the, uh, in the UK each year. And nice in their uh, figures estimated that based on their criteria, 500 of these should be a ACI uh, each year. And this was probably a slight underestimation because uh, of the selection criteria that they impose, which we'll uh, discuss. So it probably should be more than 500 a year. Um, like I said, the big lesions are the easiest uh, and less controversial. Uh, because we do have some guidelines for these. So um, it comes a little bit more relevant later, but in terms of the literature, I just wanted to put it into context. Just need to think about these factors when, when interpreting it. The literature is not really representative of our daily practice. I estimate it's probably somewhere between 5% of people that you see uh, with cartilage lesion are suitable for a clinical trial. Uh, so that's a large part of your practice which isn't suitable or not represented by the data and literature. Um, all treatments are essentially the same at two years uh, in normal people. So what I mean by that is non-athletes. And consequently, it's the long-term follow-up which is um, important to, to sort of read into, which unfortunately is the weakest part of the literature. Cartilage trials are very expensive. And they're often, as a consequence, low in numbers because of the time it takes to get those people because they only represent 5% of your practice. And in reality, if you're going to have a study comparing two treatments, the power needs to be around, or the numbers to give it power need to be around about 100. So just bear that in mind, uh, again, when interpreting the literature. Uh, but as a consequence of this expense, it's limited to high value products such as ACI. And when we get down into scaffolds, which are less um, or cheaper, uh, it still takes the same amount of money roughly to, to carry out the trial. So um, consequently, uh, it's harder for these small companies to do that. Surgeon experience is therefore limited by early failures because it's pretty rare for us to see any of these patients beyond two years and unless they get sent back to us, but because of the young mobile population, they may not. Um, and therefore, a decision with regards to the smaller treatment should be based on a balance of, of evidence from the animal, human data, economic, regulatory restrictions, so practicalities of actually obtaining the product and then sort of personal preference in, uh, in implementing it. So um, those things are just sort of bear in mind. But just like any other cartilage talk, really, um, the knee is, the, is an organ, you know, you, you have Think about cartilage repair unless these factors are in place. So the alignment, the meniscus, and if you haven't got a meniscus, then meniscus transplant um, should be considered. And 50% is the sort of agreed uh, marks. So if you have less than 50%, then a meniscus transplant should be considered. Um, and ACL reconstruction, obviously, which is the most common form of instability. With regards to alignment, we should be pretty aggressive, I think. Um, and for me, if your mechanical axis is outside of these of the tips of the tibial spine, then that would be an indication for an associated osteotomy. So uh, it's pretty aggressive, but I think uh, we need to be given that our treatments are not ideal at present. So mo uh, moving on to ACI initially, um, eligible lesions are those greater than two square centimetres, no previous history of cartilage repair, no osteoarthritis, and they uh, clarified that it has to be within the knee. Uh, so they didn't say femoral condyle, so theoretically you could still do uh, patella. So I did some quick maths, uh, not complete. So, um, so 31 months since NICE approved ACI, and these uh, on the right are the NHS England centres, which uh, are said to be uh, designated. It's not uh, complete. For example, there's still no centre in the northwest. So, but they are some of the centres that are supposed to be doing it. So, we did some quick maths. In 31 months, our uh, time we set up uh, with code on, it's 30 cases. 
uh, Robert uh, Jones, Ozzel Street, they've obviously carried on through Ozzel, so they're self manufacture So they, it's somewhere between sort of 50 and 60 cases in that time period. Exeter, I wasn't able to get the buzz, uh, uh, details before this, but um, I'm not sure how, how many, but he certainly won't be doing more than, than Oswald Street. Sheffield's done one case, Southampton one case. So, you know, best case scenario there, we're probably looking at about 120 cases in that time period based on nice figures. We should have done 1,250 ACI cases in that period. So there is a significant unmet need in the UK, and that has implications. If we look at Codon, which is the only uh, commercial uh, product available in the UK, so in Germany they've done 14,500 cases, which is a phenomenal number. Um, Austria uh, have just started, Netherlands just started, uh, and then Italy and France are going to come along with uh, the UK. If you try and look at the evidence for uh, Codon, it's actually a little bit limited. So they did this uh, dosing study on the left here uh, to look at which or how many chondrocytes uh, per square centimetre is beneficial. And then they did this study uh, where they compared adolescents to uh, young adults. And actually the study that they used in the NICE evidence is actually unpublished, uh, but it's basically based on 102 patients, which is, uh, so again, so appropriate power, and that's the sort of power that you need uh, which is power to show non-inferiority to microfracture um, with two-year follow-up. But like I said, it's not published. We don't really know what the data, but I believe it did show non-inferiority. So um, there's some advantages to the current product. So uh, this is uh, you know, on the left here. So these yellow dots are spheroids. There's about 200,000 chondrocytes per yellow dot. And this is a lesion of the trochlear. It can be asserted arthroscopically. That brings its own technical challenges. But after 20 minutes, they do become stable so that it can stick on the surface and you can introduce water in at that time period. It takes a little bit of confidence to get to that stage, but it is actually possible uh, to do that. But it's an unusual product, which does take some getting used to. Um, in terms of the practicalities of performing ACI, so uh, you know the limitations are are in place because you need a HCA license, which is a big challenge for a lot of places now. We've given them all up uh, and undertaken SLAs with uh, allograph companies. So, um, and this is not easy to get back once you've lost it, um, as there's a significant administrative and financial uh, cost uh, to that. Uh, once you have that in place and you develop your SOPs, a various risk analysis, then before doing a case, you have to have an MDT to discuss that case, make sure it meets the criteria. Then you have to order it on a blue tech system, which is this high value pharmacological um, program, which the rheumatologists commonly use to order these expensive drugs. But it just creates an audit trail with your signature on the bottom, essentially. Um, you have to follow, um, you have to undertake a specific consent process outside of the normal consent, um, which is uh, code on consent as well as undertake a HDLV1 uh, sample which is a blood test you would normally get if you uh, go for organ donation or, or, or blood um, donation and all this needs to be documented in the notes there's some issues about pediatric patients we can't do um, pediatric patients the product's not licensed for people over the age of 18 and so if I have a, pe a pediatric patient that needs uh, treatment then uh, I refer to Ozistry because they, they can do under 18s. Um, is inability to control dosing. So here this is the um, uh, the product going in uh, where the um, little yellow balls, you can see spheroids are being inserted, but it's on this stylet and it's very difficult to actually control that stylet if you have more than one lesion. Like I said, dry scope comes with some difficulties. Um, and yeah, it, it, to start, it's very different to what we used to. We don't have a patch, can't structurally sew it in, and consequently, uh, in um, uncontained uh, lesions, it, it, um, it, it's going to take a bit of getting used to. So in terms of osteochondral allograft, this is the other potential treatment for um, lesions greater than two square centimeters. Um, so the strengths of this are bone fixation, uh, highland cartilage immediately uh, and we're not size uh, uh, limiting so um, you know the, 
and like a Tolgas version, uh, we can go as big as we want, really. Um, so fresh cell graph. So then it'll strip port goals of screening and testing to reduce the risk of disease transmission. Uh, following harvest and 24 hours of treatment and antibiotic solution, the grass are then refrigerated at four degrees in either uh, ringers or in a uh, culture medium to maintain the viability. And so it's a minimum 14 days before they're released. And it takes this long to get the bacterial uh, swab results back as well as the uh, various blood tests back from the um, uh, donor. And then you need to size match it to the donor. So um, it's not a case of uh, just simply taking any graft, it must be matched. So it's particularly the bigger you go, the more important it is to size match uh, the condyle uh, so that you can get the same radius of curvature, whether you're doing a shallow graft or a, or a, a mega oats. Um, and there's been even more restrictions now placed on the HDA in terms of um, how these graphs are processed. So this has an impact even further now on availability in the UK. And it's all about cell viability. So um, although the data on this is actually a little bit uh, fuzzy, but um, it's believed that there's an inverse relationship between uh, storage time and chondrocyte viability, but it's all done in dogs, really. And so um, in the dog model, it was shown that uh, results were better if the viability was above uh, 70%. Um, but actually, if you look at the human samples, we seem to struggle to uh, keep viability above this, uh, even in the current protocols. So uh, the current recommendation is to actually get these graphs in as soon as possible to maintain this viability, but uh, the official sort of sell by date is uh, 28 days. Um, in terms of indication, so technically in, in the States, it is an osteochondral lesion or chondral lesion uh, greater than two square centimeters, but uh, it's much more vi widely available in the States. And I think really for us, it should be refined uh, a little bit more uh, and to keep it to the people that really need it. So, so large traumatic lesions, large osteochondritis, dissecans, AVN and, and revision procedures because there's not a lot of options in the in this group as opposed to ACI is open to people in the group and two centimeters group so if you can have ACI you should have ACI and if you need um, osteochondrograph then uh, we should be able to do that um, so just to run through a couple of examples and demonstrate the technique so this is a multiple AVN to the chemotherapy probably four minutes. Um, so that's the scope, just the, the, the whole condo is dead really and, and the, the um, cartilage is coming away. I think the important thing uh, is that on the opposite side, you can see here that there's an infarct there, but it doesn't go into the subchondral bone, so there is a gap. And, and these tend to be asymptomatic, similarly on the tibia there. As long as you've got a normal piece of bone, then they're okay. But on, obviously on this side, it's gone in and it's collapsed. So, so the, you know, osteochondrograph really is the only option here. ACI, you have to bone graft all this, and we know the results are worse than that sort of sandwich technique. So, so this one was suitable for a mega oats. So she had two dowels uh, cut from the uh, hemicondyle, which was sized to her and we try and keep them as low as possible so five mils of bone uh, would be the max ideally but in someone of her that needs more you can then either back graph with autologous or you can uh, extend up to 10 mils to replace all that dead bone but uh, and this is her 18 months later so you can see it's integrated well we've got rid of that infarct um, and we've matched the joint so if it's not too bad but even then the, the radius of curvature isn't quite quite right and then in terms of massive OCD, so this is 17 year old. This isn't a cut through the notch. This is actually CT of the femoral condyle. It's just, it's missing. Um, and this is one of these sort of almost congenital type OCDs that we see. And, and this has to be done by a shell technique where you actually just cut a large piece of the condyle off and then hand uh, shape it to match him. And, and then as you can see, trying to keep it as thin as possible, but uh, there's limitations because it can be quite tricky just to shape this by hand. And then uh, this one needed an osteotomy, which I actually did six weeks later because he's not weight for three months um, and then did that six weeks later before he started weight bearing so that um, it just reduced the operative time in one session. 
And then failed cartilage procedures. So the classic one would be microfracture. So, uh, and we'll talk about this a bit later, but this large interlesional osteophyte from previous failed microfracture, which again, uh, two dowels. Uh, and this really is the only technique which has been shown to, to be uh, as good in a revision situation as opposed to a primary situation. So that again, we should reserve osteoconolograph for this sort of scenario. And the issue around um, osteoconolograph is not only availability, but it's also funding. So for me, it's originally been a fun individual funding request, but that's actually become even harder now. So we're having to look at a, a new service development. Uh, for others, I, they're using it or coding it as a bespoke implant and getting around the funding that way. Um, with the insurers, companies and it's very much a case-by-case -case basis um, so sort of saying well these are suitable for ACI but we do this because it's better and it's roughly the same price so they'll often maybe consider uh, authorizing that um, because the hemicondyl is approximately 13,000 pound or 14,000 pound I think it is now um, and ACI is 10,000 pound but it's two surgeries, so it, it sort of equates to roughly the uh, the same. Uh, and our problem when you come to actually, if you have to speak to someone in uh, the CCG or whatever, there is no tariff, there is no nice guidelines, and therefore they do not compute really. And it gets very difficult to try and explain it. And if we look at cost effectiveness, we know uh, from the Warwick uh, Evidence Group who did the ACI work, they compared osteoconal allograph to natural history, showed it to be highly cost effective, um, and also said that revision OCA also appears to be cost effective, uh, although the evidence was a little bit uh, uh, shaky, more evidence is needed, but it's a cost effective procedure against natural history, and we've sort of tried to compare it against ACI. So these are the data for ACI and OCA. And if we look here, so OCA, there's a lot of data out to 15 and 15 plus years with excellent survival so 66 percent of 20 years there and if we look at aci again we do have data out to 15 years 71 percent again good data and comparative results really but there's a lot less actually in the aci than there is in the oca group and the problem is we're never going to be able to do a trial comparing these two treatments so it's very much sort of um i think not saying they're interchangeable but to say that OCA is for bone and cartilage loss or revision, ACI is for chondral loss, with some bone can be compensated, but it's very much a chondral treatment. And if you look at, if we compare the cost of ACI versus OCA, so we've got the one surgery versus two, grass file is good in both, quality repair is good in both. Um, we've got complication where it's the same, return to sport, is roughly the same, but if anything, slightly higher in the OCA group, it's particularly the smaller ones. Return to sport is quicker in the OCA group compared to ACI, so return to high impact activities or potentially return to work is going to be higher in in uh, OCA, particularly among a worker. And the rehab shorter as well with OCA because, again, it's only um, one procedure. So the cost per quality actually is more beneficial towards OCA uh, versus ACI, but it's difficult to put an actual number on it because there's been no comparative trial. So conclusions with that, osteoconalograph is an excellent option, but will there be a universal solution? And that's principally due to availability as much as anything. And uh, Christian will talk about that. Um, there's a significant supply and demand problem, um, which is difficult, I think, to to overcome unless we have a UK solution, uh, but that is a long way off. Um, in the meantime, I think if we were to rationalise the, the, the use of these products, then it should be restricted to need and not to indications. So very much those indications we've talked about as opposed to um, just over two square centimetres. Uh, that requires sort of a bit of national framework, but again, that, that is a long way off. So lesions greater than two centimeters in individuals have a guarded long-term prognosis and intervention um, should be considered early following the onset of symptoms. The data would sort of suggest that that, that is probably the better way to go as opposed to leave, leaving them until, as long as possible. Um, I think it's important to select the right therapy for the right lesion and that needs to be done the first time. 
And so we really need to increase our ACI numbers. We're way below what it should be. Um, and if we don't increase our ACI numbers, then again, I think Codon will follow, Tygenx, Macy, pull out the UK, and then we won't have a, 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 an ACI option. Um, and as a consequence, because of the restrictions, then you know, I think we are at the stage where lesions should be treated um, with over two centimeters with advanced therapies in specialist centers because that's where the ACI is being carried out. Um, and I think we should be at least saying to patients or offering patients the option of um, having ACI or having their advanced therapy with a two centimeter lesion. And it's patient's choice. If they choose not to, then, then that's fine. But I think we need to be giving them the option um, to be shown that we're compliant with nice guns and also giving them the best, the best option uh, for these lesions. Thank you.